Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah's. And Rafina Antonetti. We're here to do one thing, folks. And that's talk straight about the Bible. Nothing more important than the Word of God. Amen. And so as we talk about the Word of God, we get wisdom, we get strength. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling my mind being stretched out. Amen. Stretched out. I sometimes, just once in a while, I get a full feeling of what Jesus may have thought like when he was on the earth. We, I guess all of us can experience that, but imagine living in that every moment of the day. That is a feat. But the Word of God gives us also not wisdom, not just wisdom, but it gives us clarity and strength yes. for the day. Mm. Well, we've been looking and we're still looking into the three verses of Scripture in Psalms, excuse me, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 22. And I'm going to have my wife read that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing and help to all their flesh. Well, when you read that, if you just took the first few letters, the, excuse me, the first few, few phrases, my son, let them, for they are. Hmm. My son, let them, for they are. You say, my son, attend, let them not depart, for they are life. Yesterday, we talked about the amount of time that we spend in life hourly, and we went through a whole breakdown of that. So if you want to hear that again, you can just go back to yesterday's video. And then my wife spoke about the importance of being grounded also. That's what we are talking about today because it says, let them not depart from your eyes. And so what is not to depart from my eyes? The scriptures. You know, I'm reminded of the words that Jesus said when he said, if your eye is good, if it's single, mm -hmm. your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, then your whole body will be full of darkness. The body there is not talking about the physical body so much, but it's talking about the body of the soul, mm -hmm. the body of the soul. Did you know that the soul basically is body? Remember the Bible says that God breathed into the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul. His body became alive when God breathed him as a spirit into his body, but then the soul became alive. Mm -hmm. And so what we're looking at is the light of scripture entering into the eyes of our hearts and in our souls. Mm -hmm. But James talks about that. He says, receive humbly the word that was given to you, that grafted in your soul because you're receiving the gold of your salvation, the glory of God, mm -hmm. the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we need to c continually study the word of God. And yesterday, simple questions were, were actually just put out there. And I'll say it again real quickly. And do you know the Ten Commandments? You say, why do we keep hitting that? Because it's the foundation, the basics of all that we are when it comes to the truth, when it comes to understanding God's way. Well, we should know them. Why? Because that's our whole life. Don't you know that we live in that every day? Mm -hmm. God first, right? No other God. Not making any images for ourselves. Not taking the name of the Lord in vain. Keeping the Sabbath, which is basically is keeping the day of the Lord holy. You know, every day should be a Sabbath for us. Mm -hmm. The Jews enjoy the seventh day. It's their rest. Mm -hmm. But do you know when, when Sunday comes around the first day, you know what they do? They're preparing for the next Sabbath. They have the Sabbath in mind. That's what they do. That's all they do all week. They're working, but they're working toward that one day that they rest where they could be with God. Well, and honor your mother and your father, which is the fifth commandment. The sixth is thou shalt not kill. The seventh, do not commit adultery. You know, the eighth, do not steal. Number nine, it says, do not be a false witness to anyone. And number 10, do not cover. So, I mean, we live in this every day. Our eyes, our ears. Our mouths, our hearts, our mind, everything that we do is surrounded in that. So do you know them? And so understand that you should, you should know things about the Bible that people ask you. Well, we're talking today about good doctrine hmm. because it says that we should not let them depart from our 
eyes. Mm. You know what Jesus said? On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. Well, what rock is he talking about? Just, just before this, he asked the disciples, who do men say I am? And they said, some say you're Jeremiah's. Some say you're John the Baptist. But, you know, he asked a very important question to his disciples after that. He says, who do you say I am? And Peter opened his mouth quickly. You are the Christ, the Son of God. And you know what, you know what he said after this? He said, Peter, this was not revealed to you by flesh, but by my Father in heaven. He said, and upon this rock I will build my church. He said, he said Peter, you're a rock. But it wasn't that Peter was a rock. He said, what you receive from my Father is a solid revelation that can never be broken. That I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. And upon this rock that you receive, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell can never break it. So if it's like that, then we need to know what the solid rock, what the solid rock is. And why did Jesus place so much emphasis when he said, Whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice shall be as a man or a woman that built their house upon a rock so that the, when the winds blew and the rain came upon it and it beat upon that house, it did not fall. And so why should we build upon the rock? Because the rock is solid scripture. And the doctrine of Christ is the foundation of truth and life. Mm. But listen Amen. to this now. We have a worldly system of thinking or stinking thinking because we're sinking i'm looking at the world and the system of the world you know why we keep sinking because we keep building upon sand mm. that's why our world is falling that's why we can't get it together if only people would just stop for a moment and says why don't we bow our knee not to any idols not to anything material in this world but why don't we see god and let's see what happens. Do you know what would happen if this nation turned to God? And one day, God will show us miracles. So we're living in a world in which all things are passing away. Are passing away. You know, our kingdoms are passing away. Empires are passing away. Cities are passing away. Institutions are passing away. Families are, are passing away. Everything that is liable to change and corruption is passing away. Did you know that's one universal law? And it seems to prevail everywhere. And that is... In all created things, there is a tendency to be decayed. Mm. There is something sad and depressing about this, isn't it? What profit has a man in the labor of his hands? That's a question. Is there nothing that shall stand? Is there nothing that shall last? Is there nothing that shall endure? Is there nothing of which we can say, this shall continue forever. And you have the answers in the text when he said, I will build my house upon a rock. Yeah. So our Lord Jesus Christ speaks of something which shall continue and not pass away. And that is the solid rock of his doctrines. You know, when he finished the Sermon on the Mount, the pe that says the people were amazed at his doctrine. Because he taught not like one of the Pharisees, not like the Pharisees, but he taught as one with great authority. That's why we need to have the doctrines of Christ and not let it out of our sight. Because Amen. it is the authority of God in heaven and on earth. Look at the five things he spoke about. A building, my church. He's not talking about a brick building. He's talking about the people of God. I'm going to build my people. Secondly, he is the builder. Christ says, I will build my church. He's the foundation on this rock. I will build my church. Everything that comes against it, the perils are implied, meaning everything that comes against it, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And we have security asserted when he says the gates of hell shall not overcome it. Now, I just want to say one more thing before I turn this over to my wife. And that is that we've been spending so much. I'm talking about trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. Here, just in the United States, trying to build a security system that will work to keep us safe. Mm. And every one of them has failed. But the believer has a security. And it is through the word of God that we grasp just how deep and how beautiful is the love of God toward us because 
of all the prophecies concerning Christ Jesus. We can lean on every promise that he has given us. That is security, folks. And we can also see just how delicious is the table of the doctrines that he has given us. And we can eat from this delicacy of the word of God. And we can feast on the true bread of life that came from heaven right in the presence of our enemies. And I'm telling you that when we hold on to the word of God in our communities, in our nation, they will see the solid rock Amen. of Jesus in his people when we withstand all the things that comes against us. So with the word of God, the Bible tells us we can answer the enemy at the gate. Why? Because the gates of hell shall not prevail. Listen to this. Amen. Amen. The gates don't move. Gates don't move. It's when we come to the gate that the gates won't be able to stay closed because we will break right through them through the word of God. Amen. So study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed. And really that means a person who studies the word of God will not stink mm. because they rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. So in these last days shall not the church of God be saturated with the scriptures. Wow. 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 Having the foundation of Christ in our life is the most important thing. It is so important for us to bend our ear, to stretch out our ear to what is truth. Amen. The truth is what will set us free. We cannot allow it to escape us for a moment. We cannot sleep on what is happening in the world. God's word has to be in the forefront of our eyes, our ears, and our heart. If we don't, how else will we know the lies? <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's obvious if someone says, this color is orange and you're looking at it and the color is purple, you know that that person is lying. But what happens when it appears to be truth? Jeremiah is talking about foundation. What is our foundation? What is it that we're holding on to? What do we have to arm ourselves against lies? Do we have enough truth in us to disarm or extinguish the lie. Remember that he comes, he comes as an angel of light. That's pretty scary, right? That we can be staring right in the face of the devil and not curse his name and not even know it. Hmm. And not even know it. Hmm. I wanted to bring this, this, this example, for instance, right? Let's take abortion. The lie is this, that a fetus that is within the mother is not a person yet. Mm. That's the lie. But the truth is that God said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. He already, in God's eyes, in God's mind, in God's heart, he had already formed a person because he said, I knew you. Hmm. Or let's take the argument that so many women have that this is my body. I can do whatever I want. Hmm. I have the freedom of choice. But the truth is, this is not our body. It is not our own. Hmm. Right? It sounds good, mm -hmm. of course, but... um. When somebody tells you, you don't, you can't tell me what to do. I do whatever I want to do with my body. But that's a lie. And even in church, even Christians think this way. Why? Because they do not know the truth of what the scriptures said. Mm. They do not have anything to extinguish that lie mm. that comes from the devil himself. Even from biblical times, the enemy has tried and succeeded in many cases to snuff out future generations. Wow. And he's still doing it now. But according to scripture, 
1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from God, and that you are not your own property? You were bought with a price. So then honor and glorify God with your body. So he's talking to us, but the truth is, is that even if you're an unbeliever, God created you and your body is not your own. Well, you know, Paul says something that's very interesting. A lot of people can take it out of context, but you can't take this out of context. What I mean is this, what you're going to hear now is the truth, but a lot of people misinterpret it. Now watch this. It says, now the Ruach, the Spirit, speaks expressively that in the latter times, some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing mm -hmm. Ruachoth, that mm -hmm. is spirits and doctrines of devils. Think about that, folks. Now, what does that mean? I like what John Gill says because John Gill has a very well. He had he's he's gone now, but he's one of the one of the mess the best I'm say mess the best commentators ever. Him and John Owens and people like him who really understood the scriptures. He speaks about the prophecy hereafter mentioned was not a human conjuncture, but as all true prophecy, it came from the Spirit of God who spoke and delivered it. Now, he says some will depart from the Latin, from the, uh, in the latter times from departing from the faith. He says mm -hmm. that is from the doctrine of faith. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. Can a Christian give heed to seducing spirits and live a life that is not consistent with the word of God? Look around you folks. Look how many ministers are taking the word of God out of context to do what they want and listen to this, to get what they want. Well, the Bible says, um, calls them carnal Christians. They're called right? carnal Christians. He says, you are yet carnal, talking to the church. Mm -hmm. So yes, some can, as a matter of fact, if you depart from the true doctrines of Christ, you already departed from the faith that is because the word of God, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So a Christian can be very well deceived. Mm -hmm. Very well deceived. It makes me sad. And it's, 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 it's a very sad commentary. But the fact is that they're seducing spirits. And it seems like, watch this, what is false doctrine except, like my wife said, it seems to be authentic, genuine, mm -hmm. until you get close up to it. I mean, you can be somewhere, you know, where there's snakes and you don't know that there's a snake crawling up your leg until it's right in your face. Hmm. And that's what deceiving spirits are. They take that which is, watch this, genuine, and they, and they turn it into what is called a lie. Remember, half a truth. Not that the truth can become a lie, but when they take the truth and they mishandle the truth mm -hmm. and they misinterpret the mm -hmm. truth, then that truth is twisted mm -hmm. and it becomes, it becomes deception because it looks like truth, mm -hmm. but is not the truth. That's right. And Jesus said, watch them. Mm -hmm. He said, those who are wolves in sheep's clothing. Notice, they're not sheep. They are wolves pretending to be sheep. And how many people come to the church mm. with deceptive mo emotions, with deception in their hearts to do evil to the church of God? Wow. But the gates of hell shall, shall not, not prevail, prevail. Mm -hmm. against the church. Uh, Craig Allen says 99.99% .99 is still a lie. <laughs> Truth has to be 100%. Amen to that, Brother Craig. That's right. Deception is 99.99%, is .99 man. That's, a, like, that's, that's so close. But man, when you look at the truth, the truth shall set you free. And the church has been bound so long with false doctrine that it's not, watch this, the church is not growing strong. The church is getting weaker in the sense because it doesn't know what the truth is. That's why I say doctrine, teaching, mm -hmm. study, mm -hmm. doctrine, mm -hmm. teaching, study, correct, rebuke, instruction. 
Why? Because as you grow, your mind will expand and you will see greater things in God and his personality, who he is. When you know God, you will worship him deeper, deeper. You will praise him harder. Like my sister says, praise him hard. But at the same time, you will serve him in wow. spirit and in truth. You know, in Galatians, it says, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let, let him. him be cursed. As we have said before, and now I say again, I love that about yeah, Paul. Again. Paul has no problem with saying, I'm telling you again, again, and again, and again, and again. You know why? Because we forget. We forget. We will know it for one moment. I I am so guilty of that. You could tell me one moment and then the next moment I'm I just forgot about what you just said. Bad thing, but I'm working on it. So if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let, let him, him be, be cursed. And it says let him go to hell, but an angel. Mm -hmm. Even if I know angel preach another gospel to you, may they be condemned to hell. Actually, and, he's referring to not so much himself. He wasn't preaching uh, uh, false doctrine, but even if an angel preaches to you a, a false gospel. And finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. It does not say put on half of the armor. It does not say put one uh, piece of the armor. It says put on the whole armor, the whole armor, the whole word from, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, put on the whole armor hmm. so that you may stand against, against the wiles, the, right. the schemes, of the devil, and this is the last comment here. In these last days, shall not the church of God be saturated with the scriptures? Amen. Well, one more thing. The scriptures that we read today, my son, my daughter, my people, attend to my words. Incline your ears unto my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes, guard them in the midst of your heart, and we're going to be getting into the last part of this. Tomorrow, God willing, for they are life unto those that find them, and health, medicine to all their flesh. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. And until we meet again, Shalom. shalom.